Hello YouTube, Dave here again, and today I have uh, a kind of a special unboxing, I guess, or an opening uh, video that I want to do, and if anybody watched my Session 2 live stream of the D&D Adventure game, uh, you would have seen sort of a preview of what I wanted to, to what I'm going to be doing a video for here, um, which I guess you also would know from the thumbnail, so I don't know why I'm trying to build up suspense to it. Uh, but I had made a pickups video, uh, actually my second pickups video for the month of January, and I had shown off some of the spell cards that I got in the arcane and uh, divine ones. Uh, the the same day that I re that I uploaded that video, uh, which was the day before I recorded it, or the day after I recorded, it, I should say, I actually picked up and added something else to my collection, and something that I passed on a uh, year, a couple years, or. Yeah, I guess a year and a half ago, or whenever they originally uh, originally came out. Uh, so today I'm going to be looking at the Curse of Strahd Taroka deck. Uh, so this cost me around uh, fifteen, sixteen dollars Canadian, and I think the price is around uh, eleven or twelve dollars U.S. I think. Uh, you can find them on the Gale Force 9 uh, website. And uh, for these things, uh, one of the common themes is where I live, which is in Atlantic Canada, um, you know, one of the more easterly provinces in Canada, and one of the smaller provinces in Canada. Uh, these things have been very, very difficult to find. Uh, I did come across a set of Taroka cards way back when Curse of Strahd first came out, and I passed on them because I they were like in a glass case. So I didn't really get to look at them, and I didn't realize that there was more to it than just using the cards for the uh, role-playing game. So, uh, like I said, we'll have a quick look at it here. Uh, so what we have is, on the back, it just says, you know, D&D Curse of Strahd Taroka deck. Uh, the Vistani have long been masters of fortune-telling. In the hands of a Vistani seer, Taroka cards uh, can tell tales of the future and provide answers to many a dark and mysterious question. Many doors will be opened. Many secrets will be revealed. Don't ask me how or why. Just follow the message of the cards. A quote by Rudolf Van Richten, a very well-known, famous character in the Ravenloft lore. Uh, include, so this includes 54 Taroka cards, handy for a trek through Barovia, as well as Prophet's Gambit, a card game for three to five players. And so that's something that I didn't know was actually in this originally. And I made a video saying that I wasn't going to pick these up way back uh, after Curse of Strahd came out. And uh, someone pointed out to me back then that, you know, there is actually a card game that comes with this. And uh, by the time that, you know, I got that uh, message or comment, I, you know, went back and they were just gone and I could never really find them again. The downside is I really kind of wish I had have picked them up originally because, uh, if I can get this open here, because the price was only, I think, 12 or $13 back then. So I would have saved a few dollars. Uh, but we'll pop her open here. So I guess that's sort of my little backstory as to how things kind of came to be that I, I only am now getting these uh, these cards. So we'll just put that back here. And so we got inside, just angle this down. So we got the Prophet's Gambit uh, rule set, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to read that actually in a moment, because the first thing I want to do is just go through and look at the actual cards themselves. So uh, if you played Curse of Strahd, or if you have the Curse of Strahd adventure book, then you've already seen these, because they have these uh, shown in the back of the actual uh, campaign book here. Uh, somewhere here. Alright, so you, 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 know, you already know what what you've got. Um, the one thing I will say is that I kind of wish that these were uh, in color only because I think that would have looked a little bit uh, a little bit better. The black and white uh, I mean it, it fits the tone of the Ravenloft setting and the Curse of Strahd setting but for me it's not necessarily you know the most visually interesting thing to look at. Oh, there we go. But still, uh, I mean, I you know tried to get these for over a year now, so I'm really just glad to have them. Uh, so we've got 
the artifact, and again I apologize for the glare, it's just the only um, the only place that I can record videos happen to have uh, lights just directly overhead, um, but we got the artifact. So we got the beast, and so these have like the crowns, which I guess makes them uh, the high deck. I, it's been a while since I did the uh, did the reading for the Curse of Strahd campaign that unfortunately has kind of completely fallen by the wayside. Uh, I really would like to resurrect that because I enjoyed running it and I had a really good group. It's just a matter of, you know, it being difficult to kind of uh, get people together there. So that was the Dark Lord, the Dungeon, the Seer, the Ghost, Executioner, uh, the Horseman, Innocent, I think this was one of the ones that I actually got um, for uh, the uh, helpful NPC. Ended up being the what was it the uh, he was sort of like the the strong kind of simple uh, NPC. I can't remember his name now. Like I said, it's, it's been a while. Uh, marionette, Miss. So we got the Raven, a Tempter, the Wizard. Transmuter, Diviner, Enchanter, Abjurer, Ooh, Elementalist, okay. I think this was one that I got as well. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop that I had the reading typed out on and saved on is no more. I'll have to see if I can actually find the printed off sheet. Uh, Evoker, Illusionist, and um, just about this, so... I had someone comment on uh, one of my videos uh, saying that basically the way that I pronounced the um, illusionist was, you know, cringeworthy, and I, I completely agree. So I was always constantly referring to them as illusionalists. And for I guess a little bit of an explanation is it was one of those things that I would intentionally say wrong because um, there was a player that I remember uh, he really liked playing um, illusionist and uh, didn't seem to like them being referred to as illusionalists so I would just say it uh, over and over again to uh, just to be kind of you know a bit of a pest and it's just one of those things that you say it enough and you have so many memories connected to that particular pronunciation that it just becomes the uh, the default so uh, I do know that it is pronounced illusionist but it's just one of those things that um, again you just kind of get so used to doing something in a particular way. Uh, Conjurer, Warrior, Avenger, whoop, whoop, Avenger, and then Paladin, Soldier, Mercenary, um, Myrmidon, or Myrmidon, and I got to be honest, this is actually, I'm seeing a lot of these kind of for the first time because I never really focused on the ones other than the ones that I used for uh, the reading that I did. So we got uh, Berserker, Hooded One, uh, Dictator, Torturer, I think Torturer was one of the ones that I got as well, uh, Rogue, Swashbuckler, Philanthropist, the trader, the merchant, guild member, beggar, thief, tax collector, the miser. Uh, maybe miser was one too. I can't remember, I think there were four or five cards that you, you, I think there were five cards. So some of these look familiar, but again, a lot of these I'm kind of really seeing for the first time, simply because I didn't use them before, so I never really bothered to look at them. Uh, we got Monk, Missionary, uh, just as a side note, it looks like the Monk is on their way to taking the Drunken Master uh, tradition, which I, ugh, I hope that's not the case, but that's just how it looks. So yeah, we got the uh, Missionary, the Healer, the Shepherd, the Druid, 
the anarchist burning down a city, the charlatan, uh, the bishop, and the traitor. So those are the cards that come uh, with the deck. Like I said, they're the exact same ones that you would see in the back of the Curse of Strahd book. And you can actually see some of them right there on the cover. So like there's the priest, uh, there's the executioner. So as like I said, it's, it's kind of neat. But Aside from just that, because, like I said, one of the reasons I didn't bother is I was thinking, how often am I really going to play uh, the Curse of Strahd campaign, or how often am I going to run it? So, like, how worthwhile is it for me to get, you know, these are great visual aids, but how, you know, worth it is it for me? Uh, so, you know, I wish I would have known that Prophet's Gambit was a thing. So let's just have a quick look and see what we got here. So, uh, just see what we got here. Uh, so the setup, separate the high deck cards, mark with the crown symbol, shuffle them and place this deck to one side. Uh, choose a dealer to shuffle the remaining cards, called the common deck. Uh, the person to the dealer's left then draws a card from this deck and places it face up in the center of the table. This is the focus card. <clears throat> the dealer then places one card per player face down around the focus. These are the player's fate cards. Players may look at their own fate card at any time. Each player, whoops, sorry, I'm, I'm actually reading it um, kind of underneath the, the viewfinder, so uh, again, I apologize for that. Uh, each player is then dealt six cards, and the common deck is placed within easy reach of all players. Discarded cards should be placed face up next to the common deck. The goal of the game is to refine your hand down to three cards, which can be c combined with the hidden fate cards and the shared focus card to make the best hand possible. So you've got the bid. Uh, each player selects one card from their hand. These are all played face up simultaneously. Uh, round one. Uh, the player with the highest numbered card in whoops in front of them may discard their fake card and replace it with a new card from the deck. They then take uh, the first uh, they then take the first turn this round. Each player takes a turn moving clockwise to play one card from their hand covering their previously played card, or discard a card to risk activating the top card of the high deck. So if you play, uh, if the card is a master, uh, an unnumbered common deck card, or has a number lower than that of the player to the right, oof, okay, then the current player may draw a new card from the common deck. Uh, risk. Each card in the high deck triggers a different special ability, which is resolved immediately before being discarded. These abilities are detailed on the reverse of this card uh, in the section titled High Deck Rules. Oh boy. So this seems like there's a lot to it. Um, so round two is the same as the first. And then we got the... whoops. I guess I should be looking through the viewfinder here. And then you have the execution. So after the second round, the player who has the highest numbered card showing decides whether to kill, discard, or save the focus card. If it is killed, then the focus card is out of play, and player's final hands will now only be four cards strong. Uh, reveal. Finally, players reveal their hand of cards and fate cards. The player with the best combination of cards using their hand, fate, and possible or and possibly focus cards is the winner. Uh, ties. In the case of two players being tied for anything, the player closest to the dealer clockwise wins. Order of winning hands. Alright, so family, five cards of the same suit in numerical order. Uh, circle, four of a kind. Fortune, uh, triple and a pair. Village, five cards in numerical order. Guild, five cards of one suit. A triple, a pair, uh, sorry, a triple, two pairs, a pair, high card. It kind of seems almost like it's kind of got a bit of an element of poker to it. And uh, then we have the high deck rules. So revealing cards in the high deck is risky as there's no telling what chaos might you might unleash. So you go through and I guess you resolve uh, the effects based off of which card you draw. So if you get the artifact, you swap your fate card with the focus card. Uh, the beast is each player discards a card then draws a card from the common deck. Oops. Uh, broken one, discard all remaining cards in your hand then draw a new card from the common deck for each one discarded. Uh, Dark Lord, choose another player, look at their hand of cards, then choose one of them to discard, then they draw a card from the common deck. 
Uh, so the dungeon. Each player must discard cards until they have three left in their hand. The game immediately advances to the reveal. Okay, that's at the yeah at the end of the game there. Uh, all right, so executioner. Uh, keep this card on the table in front of you, regardless of who wins the execution. You decide whether to kill or save the focus card. Miss, rotate the fake cards one player clockwise. Uh, ghost is whoops. Ghost is take a card from the discard pile, then discard a card. Horseman is draw two cards from the common deck and then discard two cards. Uh, Innocent, keep this card on the table in front of you. You and your cards can't be affected by any future high deck cards. Marionette, choose another player who hasn't had a turn this round. That player must either play their highest or lowest numbered card as directed by you. Then you've got uh, Raven. Whoops. Each player chooses a card from their hand and passes to the player on their left. Uh, Sears, look at <coughs> all players' fate cards once. And Tempter, choose a card from your hand and a random card from another player's hand to swap. So it seems kind of interesting. It looks like it's only a two round game. So, yeah, it seems kind of interesting. It, it, it seems like a lot to take in, honestly, at this point. I'd like to actually try to play a game of this and see how it goes. It is three to five players, so you need a minimum of three, which makes it a little bit tricky uh, for me to be able to do. <clears throat> but again, it looks like you're trying to sort of basically make almost like a poker hand and uh, try to find like the best possible cards. You just look at, you know, what the revealed card is, you look at what your uh, face down card is, and then you just have the cards in your hand that you try to um, uh, that you try to you know maneuver and do stuff with until you get um, sort of the best possible combination from uh, this list. So it uh, like I said, it seems interesting. Uh, so there you go. That's Profit's Gambit. <laughs> and overall, <coughs> um, you know, I think this is a really cool uh, product. I, you know, I like the uh, I like the cards. You know, I like the quality of them. Uh, so like I said, the only thing that you know, I would have personally changed is for the, you know, paying the amount of money that you're paying. I would have liked to have seen these in color, uh, just myself personally. Now I know with Curse of Strahd and Ravenloft, it does make a certain amount of sense to uh, have them uh, sort of be like this, you know, black and white and kind of dreary looking, looking thing. But again, I still think that it would have been nice to have had a little bit of color for, you know, like the amount that you paid. Uh, like I said, uh, here in Canada, uh, at least where I was, it was around fifteen to sixteen dollars uh, plus tax. So uh, for me, that's not a small amount of money uh, to be spending on something. But other than that, like I said, these are pretty cool, and um, it honestly makes me want to go back and rerun, uh, restart uh, Curse of Strahd. Um, you know, I'd love to pick it back up with the group that I have or that I had for it, but. Uh, you know, it's just life kind of you know gets in the way. It can be sort of difficult, but I, I you know, it makes me want to go back and, and give this another shot. So anyway, uh, so if you guys have uh, any of you watching this video, if you have uh, this deck, if you play Prophet's Gambit, um, let me know how it actually plays. Like I said, it seems like it's kind of a quick game, based on the rules. It looks like there's only two two rounds, and then you go into the execution, and uh, then the reveal. But uh, let me know how it plays to see if it's something that you know people have actually done, and uh, if it makes it you know more worth having this uh, deck of cards. Anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.